Hello everybody, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software. Today we're going to step through some of the business central capabilities regarding sales tax. Now this is going to be the out of the box capability, so I'm not using any kind of extensions or anything from AppSource. This is what Business Central offers when you first uh, open up the cloud platform. This capability is the same for the on-premise version uh, if you are not in the cloud. So what we're gonna do, and I thought the easiest way to step through this would be to go to a sales document. The sales document is typically the first place that people think of where sales tax would be calculated. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up one that I have existing. In the example of this particular sales order, I have two items that are being sold and they're both marked taxable. The customer that I'm selling to, the location that we're shipping to, we have a sales tax nexus, which means we have to collect sales tax when we ship product to that uh, location. Now this is calculating sales tax because I am selling to an end customer, uh, whether that is a business or a person, it doesn't really matter. It just means that I have a tax liability that I need to collect sales tax when I sell to that particular customer. Okay, So we can see that the system has calculated the amount excluding tax. And if you look, the numbers are slightly higher as there is sales tax calculated for this particular order. So in this case, we have $70.94 of sales tax. And that is because we are shipping to the Chicago location where we have a tax nexus that we have to collect tax on. Now, I haven't checked my numbers to see if that's the actual tax rate for those different jurisdictions within Chicago, but the example will still hold up. Now, understanding sales tax, it is where you ship the product to that typically determines whether you have to collect sales tax or not. So in my case, same customer, but we're shipping to a different location. So if I switch to Miami, where the sales tax is different, the system will recalculate the lines for me, and it will let me know that it has made that change. So as soon as I switch to Miami, you can see the tax calculation is now different. So it is actually a lower tax collected in Miami, Florida, than it is in Chicago, Illinois. So in both cases, we have a tax nexus where we have to collect that sales tax when we ship product to that location. Now the next logical question is, what if I don't have a tax nexus? What if I have that same customer, but they have a location in a state that we don't have a physical presence in? And so I don't have a, a tax nexus. And again, I'm not a CPA, I am not your tax advisor, uh, but the system has these capabilities, but you should always check with your advisors to make sure that you do or do not require sales tax in that location. So what we're going to do is say that my company does not require capturing sales tax when I ship to Indiana. So in this case, Carmel, Indiana is a location. When I change to that location, you'll see the sales tax calculation goes to zero. So again, based on where I'm shipping, I either am tax liable and I need to collect and charge for the sales tax, or I don't have that liability, in which case my customer should be claiming use tax. So in this case, the system has calculated my sales tax collection as zero. So my amount and my taxable amount are the same, okay? Now, one thing to help you with auditing this, so we're gonna switch this back to one of the tax, uh, tax liable locations. And so when I switch this back, it's gonna again calculate the sales tax. Some people say, well, how do I know what that 5912 number is? Where is that coming from? Well, the system can actually help you with that. So if you go to related order statistics, the statistics screen can show you how it came up with that 5912. I just need to click show more. When I do that, there is a number of tax lines down here on the bottom. And in this case, it's three. And the reason for that is because within Florida, I'm charged sales tax by the state, by the county, and by the city. 
So I have three different tax jurisdictions that fall into the Miami category. So when I ship product to Miami, Florida, I am ca capturing or collecting sales tax for three different jurisdictions and they each can have their own rate and then it calculates what I would owe based on that amount. Okay, so that is how you can get in and audit that number that it calculates uh, within the statistics screen of the sales document. Quickly, we're gonna go and take a look at some of the setup for this. So I'm gonna go back to our, our main dashboard and I'm gonna go to a customer. And we'll go to that same customer that we were just looking at so that you can see the information on it. Within the customer card itself, I have a tax area code. So if I don't have multiple ship to addresses for this customer, this is the one that's gonna take precedence. Okay, so I can have my tax liable checked on or off, as well as the tax area code established for the main customer record. But in my case, I was switching between Chicago, Miami, Carmel, Indiana, different locations. Well, that's underneath the customer's ship to addresses. So this is where you can establish the different physical locations that you are shipping product to for that customer. And each of these locations will have a tax jurisdiction within it. So we can see the tax area code is still set to Indiana so that if we end up creating a presence there and I become tax liable, I can simply toggle this tax liable on and it will start calculating my sales tax for that area. Now in the other locations, so both Chicago and Miami, I am tax liable and they each have a tax area code established for them. So in both cases, it calculates the tax based on where I'm shipping it to. Now let's dive just really quickly into the tax area code so you can see kind of the setup behind where these calculations come from. So the two areas that we're gonna explore are the tax area codes and the tax jurisdictions. And we'll try to keep this really high level so that it's not like a training for you, but I have my tax areas. Now this list is pretty short because it's just a demo environment, but typically this is gonna be for every tax area that you might ship product into or at least the ones that you're tax liable for. So we're gonna jump into Miami because it has multiple tax jurisdictions. Again, it calculated the three different lines, one for the state, one for Dade County, and one for the city of Miami. Okay, so that is where by selecting Miami, Florida as my tax area code, it knew the different jurisdictions that I'm gonna cal calculate tax for. So that is the tax area, and again, linked to tax jurisdictions. So let's look at the tax jurisdictions that relate to that, okay? So we're gonna go to these top three, Florida, Dade County, and Miami, and we're gonna look at the details beneath each one. And this is where the core of the system comes from. So I can have multiple tax groups. Most people will just have non-taxable and taxable, but if I had different categories of product, then I might have a different tax amount for those different types of products or, or groups. So in this case, taxable was the one it was using and it was calculating it at 3%. You can establish maximums. So if the order value is over $2,000, maybe the tax drops to 2%, okay? So it'll capture 3% for everything up to 2,000 and then for everything over, it will use a different tax amount. So that's a little bit more uh, sophisticated tax calculation, but the system will still handle that. Uh, but that's just something that you need to know about the tax nexus that you're selling into. Okay, we'll quickly look at Dade County. Uh, details for it, taxable and non-taxable. This is more traditional. Uh, and I can see that for non-taxable sales, 0%, taxable 1%, okay? And it's the same thing for the city of Miami. So based on that information, the system uses those jurisdictions, their tax details to figure out what to charge, and then calculates it on the fly on the sales order. 
This is all base setup information in the system. I need to keep those tax jurisdiction tables updated to make sure that my tax amount being calculated is correct. I said before that I'm not using any uh, extensions or third-party products to do this tax calculation. This is base business central. However, it might be beneficial, especially if you have multiple jurisdictions, to have an external tax engine calculate that. And so there is an option over here, use external tax engine, and you do have to pay for that service, uh, but there's a lot of great options for Business Central. If you're interested in which ones we might recommend, please reach out to us. I'll put my information on the bottom of the screen so that you can contact us either at our support or just at our core phone number. And give us a call, talk to us, and we'll let you know uh, who we recommend and, and what options you have for that. So that's it. That's, uh, that's sales tax within Business Central. I hope this was helpful and informational for you. If it was, please like and subscribe to our channel. That helps us get information out. Uh, and we appreciate you watching and staying to the end. So please follow us for more helpful videos in the future.